And now I'll introduce the next speaker, Christian von Boys. So there's a reason why I was not introduced with, with my um, uh, bio and, and, um, and all these things that one did in the past, um, <clears throat> because I want to propose something, especially after what, what uh, we could hear um, before, um, how to avoid the notion of the author altogether. And this is referring to uh, the text of Roland Barthes, The Death of the Author, uh, which obviously is not a legal document, but it's an interesting uh, approach if we think of all this um, terrible, confusing legal jungle that we find ourselves in. It has to do with another observation. And the observation is that we are talking about capitalism, obviously, when we talk about all these questions of rights. And so, um, from my perspective, or from my observation, it might make sense to think of, um, when we talk about copyright, um, and these terms that are so closely bound to the core of capitalism itself, that if we attack this idea of ownership, of uh, ideas altogether, we might actually kind of take out a brick of the wall of capitalism altogether and it might actually collapse, uh, ideally. Um, so uh, how could that be done? So, okay, we all know these ideas of creative commons and these ideas of what, uh, what you were t uh, referring to of alternative ways of protecting the author. Let's think of uh, if we if we skip this altogether, so what what would that mean? Um, and I think it would be it it would make it would make our production as as artists actually quite easy. We can still distribute these things. It could be used by anybody. It would not involve any licensing. It could be used by commercial players. Then the question might be, maybe it has to do with the type of content if it is used by commercial players or if it's not usable, actually. There was always this argument from a, I'm coming from Germany, people would always say we need a very strong copyright because otherwise our music is ending up on some like fascist CDs on the school yards of uh, our innocent children. Mm -hmm. And my answer was always, well, guys, make some other music that cannot be used by these guys. <laughs> this might be, it's, it's, it's kind of a, 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 a half stupid answer obviously because we cannot protect content from its usage this is a very old thought and copyright can't do that either so um, from my experiences with um, being attacked by the way how I use content that's there already this is a very old tradition you know so I'm I'm not I didn't invent anything particularly new there are, these, there are these artists like Richard Prince, Prince and they say um, the choice is the act, so it's only the choice that we have of things that exist already that make up an artwork. And if that's the case, it's also quite a relaxing thought, at least for me. You know, this, this maybe started with some type, of, some type of technology that we could use, which was tape recorders in the early days, and then it became samplers. But now uh, something else emerged, which is, I think, quite interesting, and that is AI. And with AI, we can create new types of content where the question of the author becomes a totally blurred situation. And I was doing projects in the last two years using AI algorithms, which obviously are developed by the big players, but especially by Google and Microsoft. So one uses something sort of from the other side, but uses it in a way it was not intended. And again, that's only half true, because why are these companies providing this complicated software for free, in parentheses, because they want to see how people use it. So that's a trade-off, obviously. Um, so if one uses this type of software that was, that was written for um, speech recognition and image recognition, um, for the tools that we are using every day, um, if one uses that, for example, for creating a piece of music, then it becomes an interesting question. So you have to, at least in Western Europe, you have to 
um, fill out the form by the royalty collecting societies. So who's the author? It, it's totally unclear. Is the author the person that wrote the code? So some guy at Google? Is the author the person that had the idea to m make a piece of music? Is the author the musicians that play the piece? Who's the author? So um, what we said, what we wrote into this, into, this, um, into this piece of paper was no author. So if there is no author, there can't be any rights. There can be, there is no, there is, it's sort of all the questions that we were talking about, they disappear. So if the author itself disappears, it becomes uh, a situation that's not trackable. I mean, it is in a certain way trackable, but it's not clear what the function is of the people who can be tracked. You know, when, we, when I upload music or films on YouTube, this content ID algorithm is very good, became very good in the last years, especially concerning video as well. So you're always faced, I don't know if you also have this experience, you're always faced with um, blocking content and they tell you exactly which content is blocked and why and by whom. So it's usually Sony Music Entertainment and these guys. Yeah, And then you can, you can dispute it and it doesn't help. You know, it's this, this kind of automated, um, and uh, Google gave it out of its hands. So these big three content um, protecting companies uh, they can block that by themselves. So this is a system that is almost like a fascist surrounding. So there's no way around that except one could, we, okay, we can, we can upload things on, on Vimeo that's more protected, but only because it's smaller. So this all also has a lot to do, I think from maybe from our experience, it also has, has a lot to do with uh, size and visibility. So I can do a lot of things from my experience as long as I'm kind of under the radar. When I, start, when I would try to sell a content that might be disputed by existing laws, it might become more difficult. So far, um, I can make films, I can, you know, I was using commercials in films that I made. And that's a, this is totally fine. Usually at film festivals they ask you, do you have all the rights? And obviously I have all the rights, because this is also an, an, a complicated question. But ultimately I would say, okay, no rights reserved in anything that I do, and I don't care who uses it. I don't care at all. I don't care at all. Let's think of what that means. So it might be actually reoccurring in contexts that are terrible, you know. It, it might not matter. I was once, I had a small story. I was approached by Arte Television. That was the only time I had to do with television, with films I, I'm, I'm making. And they said it's very interesting what you were what you were filming, and uh, but the film that you made that's not really a film. That's we need to make a proper TV film with your material. I said, yeah, but you know the film I made is the film I wanted to make. I don't, I'm not interested in television actually. They said, yes, but we are television. So um, can can you make a television film out of that? And I said, um, no. But uh, maybe it's interesting because then we have two versions of the same material, you know, to compare. They said, yeah, but we need you as the author. I said, you can have me as, as the author, but let me not make the film. If you, need the, if you need the name of the author, you can use it. That's I like a function. It's not the author. And I, I said, I'm not interested in it. And they said, yeah, but that's difficult. I said, yeah, just how about an editor who does this thing? And I say, yes. I can tell you now already that I'm saying yes. They were so irritated. Then they gave the material to their lawyers and they said, no, but he has Apple commercials and he has not, he doesn't have the rights. Let's skip the whole thing. So I never heard again from them. <laughs> so one is always, I don't know is if, if it's also your experience, one is always faced with this type of like really silly um, realities. And then obviously the question comes up, okay, but if, uh, how to make a film without television money and stuff like that. Yes, one has to find other ways. So maybe, like, like from my perspective, it's, it's more what we probably have to talk about, not about licensing and not about um, getting in bed with some like terrible old media conglomerates that I'm totally agreeing with, uh, like partially Marshall McLuhan determine our situation. 
but that's more Friedrich Kittler, and that was later, but referring to Marshall McLuhan. And I wanted, I, I wanted to speak a bit about the history of um, how this, how in music, how um, sampling actually became a problem. It wasn't a problem, but maybe I skip that because all the people are speaking a bit too long. Maybe it's more interesting to, uh, to discuss <laughs> these ideas. So I wanted to throw into the ring uh, sort of this idea of abandoning everything that has to do what is the description of our little get-together, and if that's actually practic a, a, a practicable way. Yeah. <laughs>